Uh, welcome to uh, the session about JavaScript in 2017. My name is uh, David Vujic, and uh, I'm a developer. Uh, I work uh, at a Stockholm-based company called uh, Biolite. And I have coded uh, a lot of C-sharp, but the uh, last couple of years, a lot of JavaScript and uh, Python. OK. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, if you have any feedback or come up with any ideas or questions or find any bugs in, my, in the code that I will uh, use here, you can contact me on Twitter, on mail, or we can have a chat after this session, okay? So I want to start off with, um, with this article. <clears throat> I, I read this about uh, maybe almost a year ago or like six, eight, eight, eight months ago, and it, uh, it made me laugh, and uh, I kind of recognized the issues uh, that this uh, person had. Has, uh, maybe you have re read it. How many of you have read this article? Quite a few. Okay. It's about a person that is... Uh, quite frustrated with, um, with uh, all these frameworks uh, because uh, he wants to uh, catch up uh, on what has been happening uh, with web development the, the last couple of years. So uh, this is actually a quote from, 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 the, uh, from the article. He, uh, his friend tells him that, come on, it's 2016, nobody uses jQuery. You should use this for a framework and stuff like that. And at the time, uh, I was also trying to 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 learn some 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 new uh, ideas in web development. I was uh, reading and trying to under trying trying to understand uh, React, and I also had that kind of uh, uh, that's why I kind of rec recognized the issues this developer had because uh, because there, there's so much uh, stuff you need to download and and understand all these uh, libraries and frameworks. Uh, and uh, the, I'm, I'm, go I'm going to take one of these frameworks, React, and, and use them as an example in the beginning. Because what caught my at attention with React was, well, when you read about uh, uh, React in particular in, 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 the, in documentation or in blogs, I think you would uh, often read about uh, something called the virtual DOM and some strange new language or syntax called JSX. And um, that sounded cool to me, but what really got my attention was, was uh, what really made me interested was the idea of how, on how to structure your, your code, some patterns on how to create your websites. So here's uh, my example website. And it's a super example web page. I'm going to use this in my, in my code examples. I'm going to fire up this one in, my, in the browser. I'm not a designer, so this is just an example. So if we look at the source code of this web page, we you can see the HTML. It has some, uh, some tags, some sections, uh, uh, on a list, or an items uh, in that list, OK? So if, if we look at this page from a, re, from a React perspective, we start to see that this page kind of is made up by, by, of several different parts. Like we have a, maybe we have a navigation in, in the left and in that navigation there's a, there's a list and in that list there are items. So each one of those could be a separate React component, as, as they call it. And that idea kind of, I, I really liked uh, that, idea, that idea. And try to understand how to, to uh, achieve that. And this is a code example on how you can write a React component for one item in that list. And when I saw this the first time, I was very confused because it looked like JavaScript. Uh, I guess it was that new, new style, ECMAScript 20-something, 20 2017. 
and it was a mix of HTML. It, it, it looks like it's a mix of HTML and JavaScript. It looks, uh, it, I think it looked uh, uh, a little bit uh, weird. But I was very interested in it, so I wanted to dig deeper and understand how to, to achieve this and what, what, is, what it really means. And then I found out, to be able to run a, a web page uh, that looks uh, that where, where where you have code like this, you need to understand a lot of other things. You need to be able to know how to download stuff from the internet by using uh, npm, and npm is Node. I didn't know very much about Node at, at that time. I, I think I've learned learned a, a little bit, and. I've, Read something about Webpack. Was that a part of React, or was it? What is Webpack? Was what? Where? Where does it fit in? And the code is written in. Uh, you can write your code in ES twenty seventeen, the kind of newest version of JavaScript. And then you need a tool uh, that uh, to, like Babel. So there was a lot of pieces that that are included that you need to have to be able to run a simple web page page, page like this. So uh, that was kind of, that made me a little bit uh, worried uh, because all I wanted to do was to create my simple web page. And I started to feel like, like Mark here. All I wanted to do was uh, just uh, like a Hello World app. I didn't wear a suit though, so. Okay. So I, I was started to think, is it possible to use the ideas of, of, of React, uh, because that was my kind of uh, focus then, with, with components without using all those frameworks or, and libraries and tools and stuff? Uh, so I, that caught my attention. It, was it possible? I, it should be possible because it's JavaScript. You can do anything you want with JavaScript. So how hard can it be? So I gave it a couple of uh, late nights. Uh, I spent a couple of late nights coding. I'm, I, have a, I'm a, uh, I have two small kids, and when they are asleep, then it's time. Then I can really spend some time coding. Otherwise, it's uh, impossible. So what I came up with was code that looks, looked something like this. I think I'm going to fire up this web browser first, just to see, so you can see how it looks like, what it looks like. No, oh, sorry, wrong port. Like this. Okay, so here's that example site, but in the browser. So if you click on each link, some, something magic happens on the other places of this page. Okay, and here's my uh, source code. So I have some sort of component here that I call list item. This one also is a list item and so on. And that one lives in a diff another component called the list, uh, list component. And the list component lives in something called the nav component. You, yeah, you get the idea. And in the main window, I have something that I've named the terminal component. And down here, we have a log view component, and I'm reusing that terminal component again to print out some, some text here. And I have some click events attached to it. So this was my, my example. I didn't, didn't want, to, want to confuse myself by using some fancy CSS or other libraries. So, if we look at this um, list item component code, so I try to code like like uh, they do in React. So I made some sort of a module quote uh, with with a render function that someone can call and pass in some some data to it. And what happens then is that I have a, a, another uh, module that loads. Uh, a template for me, and kind of you, uh, changes that template based on that data. So 
The template in this case looks like this. It's just one row of HTML. And uh, the list item is used by another component called list, uh, which kind of renders uh, a couple of list items and, the, uh, and so on. So it's kind of a chain of, of on components. So I was quite happy with this. I made something work uh, with kind of made components, made created files in, 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 a, in a separate folder that I could reuse. If we, if we look at the network tab, let me just uh, making sure I haven't anything in the cache. So there's a bunch of scripts and uh, some HTML loaded here. So my list item, this is the HTML, and the list item.js is, is right over here. So, okay, cool. I could, I could uh, create a web page with uh, using some sort of components. Then, then kind of uh, got some, uh, kind of some hours of sleep, and, and a couple of days later, I kind of uh, opened the, uh, my editor again and looked at the code and uh, started to stare, what, uh, what is this? So uh, I kind of understood that this is maybe kind of a one-person project. It was make totally, total sense to me when I wrote it. Will anyone else understand it? Don't know. So, so I started to see some issues with, with the code base. I guess you have seen some issues already. One of the issues that, that, that I was, uh, couldn't really let go was, okay, so I get some, this. I don't understand what this template load does. Okay, but I can guess that it kind of loads the HTML and then kind of manipulates with, with an, uh, some sort of HTML element and sets uh, uh, the inner HTML or the text content uh, to that. Okay. So this is uh, the, com the, H the template uh, that is loaded. And I guess the, the kind of data ends up in here. So, but what would happen, besides that it's uh, quite complicated to kind of add this content to, to an element using uh, code, what would happen if I would just decide to add a span tag or something? Then my, my, uh, com my nice component would, uh, would break. So I started to think, maybe I, I should uh, do it differently. Maybe I... I, I uh, Maybe this can be solved by using a library. So, I'm going to shut this down. Like this. So, I try to solve this issue uh, by using a template engine. And if we go back to, to the code, so my HTML, oh, it's quite high, up high, there, like this. The HTML and the, the data is now uh, connected. So now I can add more H, uh, code, sorry, more, more like span tags and whatever I want, and know where, where the data will end up, which element will, will present this uh, data. And the um, JavaScript uh, code here is, looks very similar. The, the row that added data to that uh, element is gone, and instead I'm passing that uh, uh, da data with, with co that should be presented to, to my templates uh, function. And uh, this is used by, this is, uh, I'm, I'm doing this by using a framework, framework called Mustache. So now this is my kind of the first dependency that I downloaded using NPM. So I kind of got familiar with NPM and how to, uh, how it's added on in, in the package.json file and versioning and things like that. And by doing a quick look at my secret template function, I almost uh, don't dare to show it to you but I do it anyway. So somewhere here, we're using that mustache uh, template engine to render a template with some data. And my index.html, my HTML file, 
has a reference to, to, to that file. Okay. Then I have my other uh, components listed like this. So I think I'm, I made some progress. Uh, but then I started to think. Th then I kind of discovered another, another issue. Because when I added this uh, library, I kind of realized that it has to be on top, on top of the... the uh, script list, because since all my files, at least that templates.js uses some, some global object called mustache, it needs to be loaded already. So that kind of revealed a lot of issues uh, in my code, because all my other components have dependencies. So my list item, JS, uses uh, this template uh, code. And this one has to be loaded before. So, in this super simplistic example, maybe that's not uh, that too difficult to kind of find out where which order you should put it. But in a real live uh, example, it's uh, it's going to be uh, uh, difficult and causing a lot of frustration. So, I thought about it and kind of uh, think about maybe there's uh, there's a framework for it, a library. Of course, there is a library for it. So I downloaded it and kind of refactored my code again a bit. So this is a separate branch like this. If we go back to, to the HTML file, where all my sources are end up, so now I only have one script file with a reference to something called required.js. And, and uh, require.js is, is a library to hand, uh, that helps you hand, uh, manage your dependencies. And it, it has uh, some pointer to, to, uh, to my entry point. So this is all I have to do in my, in my, in my uh, HTML file. If we go back to my JavaScript uh, component here, what also is different is that, I don't know if you remember, I had some sort of a namespace uh, uh, solution to to kind of group my, my modules. I had something called vanilla and then dot list item equals an, a function. But re with require JS, it you have uh, the possibility to create uh, a, a modules that are that have their their dependencies uh, kind of resolved automatically. So and that is done by using a, a require JS dot function called Define. So this is how you define a module, and you define your your dependencies. You tell require the, I need to be able to run this code. I need uh, something called templates. So this can be a list of of uh, other modules that you have. So 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 require uh, JS will make sure everything that you have stated here is loaded before you run execute your own code. If we look at the template.js, it has a dependency to that mustache library. So it loads that code before and then can start using it. OK. So I think this uh, kind of uh, solved, a couple of, solved, solved a couple of issues. But then I started to think, well, I, I read this book about ECMAScript 2017, and JavaScript has support, native support for modules. Why do I need uh, uh, some custom way of, of defining them? Maybe I can use ECMAScript 2017. So when the kids had fallen asleep, I uh, took the opportunity to code some, uh, to refactor this code. Like this. And I, I kind of went all in. So this is my, uh, this is my list item component again. I'm using uh, native uh, uh, imports, ECMAScript 2017 or 2015 <laughs> imports, 
uh, that also will resolve the, the dependencies in the kind of same style as required JS. Before I use them, it will be resolved and that dependency chain will be fixed for me. And since all my code before this refactoring, I, uh, I forgot to say that, but they used uh, uh, callbacks to kind of when this function is rendered, when it has created an element, it executes a callback to pass on that element so the parent can decide what to do with it. So do with it. And somewhere in the end, there's uh, a code that injects uh, that HTML to, to the page. So I have started to uh, think, well, maybe I should use the new keywords, async and await. So I went all in with those using the new uh, const key, constant let keywords, exports and stuff like that. So I was very happy with, with, uh, with uh, how, it, how that ended up. Now I'm going to uh, remove my, my dependencies existing and hoping that my internet connection will help me a bit. Oh, good. So, uh, what's different with uh, this uh, branch is now I, I have uh, made myself dependent on a build step because even though uh, this looks simple and nice, I don't think there is a browser yet that supports that import statement. Maybe Chrome does with a, with a flag, I'm not sure. But uh, in a real world scenario, you probably will not only need to support several browsers, but also several uh, different versions of each browser. And, and your site needs to work on a, on a phone and on, on your I, uh, iPad and stuff like that. So code, running code like this is probably not realistic. So I have, we are now dependent on a build step, something to kind of transform this modern JavaScript to old school JavaScript code. So I've learned, learned so I'll dig a little bit deeper in uh, NPM and what, what these tools does because I started to use that Babel uh, compiler. So if we look at my package.json here, I'm starting to uh, use some, some some strange uh, scripts here. I have my build build step pair that that runs another uh, build step called transpile that uses Babel that tells you well which uh, what where are the original files and where are the uh, uh, destination files. So I'm starting to do I've added some complexity here, but I was so happy with. Uh, uh, being able to, to use ECMAScript 2017, so I thought about, uh, I'm going to fix that later. Let's hope uh, this uh, will work. I'm going to make sure that I'm not using any caches. Oh, okay. So this site seems to work as expected, like, just like before. And if we look at the, uh, re the kind of HTML result here, we still have that required.js file. And the, uh, the HTML uh, looks uh, about the same as it did before. So what, so what I did was I coded in ECMAScript 2017 and transpiled this code using Babel um, to, to uh, the way it looked before, almost, using required.js modules. So, so ECMAScript here, and the output is uh, AMD modules with required.js, because that works in the browser. You just point a direction to, to, uh, to that uh, library, and it will work. <clears throat> Okay. So the, the next night, I had uh, thought about it during the day and kind of fired up the browser again when, uh, when I had the opportunity and just kind of looked 
at the code base here and browse the, 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 uh, this tag. So, oh, here's a, a lot of scripts loading. So what is this? Well, this is uh, the, the feature of, of the library I'm using, Recari.js, that is when it's compiled. It's kind of resolving each dependency that I have stated and add a script tag to it in the head section of the HTML document. And again, in, the, in my simplistic example, I guess that's not a problem. But in a real world example where you have like a, tons of scripts maybe, you might have some issues with, with performance. So I have to fix this. Maybe there's a library for it. <laughs> So I was thinking, maybe I should try to kind of minify and bundle everything. So it, all, the output is uh, one single file. So the code looks, uh, looks the same, no difference here. Still, still the same files. In uh, my HTML document, it looks very much the same, except uh, it, uh, this, the entry point is uh, uh, something else. It points to a bundled folder. And if we look at my, my scripts, I've added another step here called bundle. And it uses something called r.js, which is require.js, uh, the, the require.js bundle, bundle feature. So since I'm using that on the, on, on the output, I want to kind of minify it using that same technique. And you can pass some, some uh, uh, features to it, where it should end and stuff like that. So it, it, I think it worked. You know, it kind of uh, removed all that uh, nasty uh, script, all, all those nasty script tags, and I'll put it one single file. So I, shut, I kind of closed the editor, and uh, a couple of days later, I opened the editor, and it uh, kind of started... Uh, it opened with this, uh, this file op uh, opened. And I was looking at my scripts and wh what have I done here? The, who I don't even remember what, what I have done here. There's a lot of, of scripts and a lot of shell uh, stuff. I don't know. I, I'm, using t I'm used to like right-click stuff. And how, how did I manage to do this? I'm, I must have learned something, but uh, I guess I forgot it already. So I was thinking, do I really need all this stuff? And why do I need to output it using uh, require? Why do I need require.js? I want to get rid of, of this uh, dependency. So asked myself and the internet, is there a, a library for this? And yes, there is a really good library that can solve this issue for me. And uh, this one is called Webpack. If we, we go back to, to the package.json file where I, have, where I specify all my dependencies and my, my, my cryptic scripts, so uh, require.js is gone, and my script se section looks uh, a little bit cleaner. So uh, where did, did they all go? So I have something called uh, Webpack here. that I call, uh, on, When I build this, I'm calling this Webpack. And when I want to start my, my, my site, I'm using something called Webpack Dev Server. Before, I used uh, the, the built-in. On, um, um, on this machine, I have Python pre-installed, so it's very easy to start a, a built-in local HTTP uh, server. But on other machines, maybe Python isn't pre-installed, like in Windows. So I started to think maybe using uh, something that is downloaded on, when you hit npm install is better than using expecting that, that the user has something, that your colleagues has something uh, pre-installed. So, 
So, but what, where is all this? Uh, is Webpack pack magic? Well, uh, I guess it's almost magic because it does a lot of things. It has a web, uh, sorry, a dev server. It can uh, minify and uh, bundle your files uh, and, and lots of stuff. Uh, but the, some of this magic is uh, what's ended up in this configuration file here. So it's a configuration file that you write in JavaScript. So you can, uh, here you can specify what your output file should be named, or where it should be end. If you should use uh, anything different if you are running in production mode or development mode and, and things like that. And on my index.html, I no longer have any dependencies to require.js. I have only have a, some, uh, a, a link to, to a bundled JavaScript file. Because it turned out that not only uh, uh, being good at minifying and bundling, Webpack can understand ES 2017 modules. So it can take the, the source code and transpile it to, to something without using uh, like require.js or any other uh, library. So it's kind of a Swiss army knife. Okay. Six hundred and eleven packages installed. Okay. Whatever. And our oh sorry, it started to fire up forgot to fire up the browser. And nothing works. What have I what I, what mistake have I done? Oh no. Oh yeah, I forgot one step. I forgot that I have made myself dependent on a build step. And of course, if you run this on a, some sort of continuous uh, integration uh, environment, you need to run those steps too. Oh, good. So, oh, no, 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 I don't want to open Firefox, sorry. Uh, so if I click uh, on these, these items, it looks like they kind of work ex as expected. And I have uh, kind of a, a reference to, to a single JavaScript file called bundle.js. And if I refresh this, I'm uh, loading a, a simple CSS file. <laughs> and my, my sing, uh, just a single JavaScript file. Before I had a, a bunch, of jo uh, bunch of separate files. I still have those templates though. I'm still using uh, mustache uh, to, uh, and render templates using that. I'm going to shut this down again. So I was uh, starting to feel a little bit happier, happy with my code base and happy that I have learned like Webpack, or at least understood some of Webpack and understood what the configuration file does. I even ha uh, was, I was a daredevil and uh, kind of experimented with different uh, uh, outputs and things like that. But what, what, one thing that I have avoided uh, for too long is, uh, is this strange load function in, in the templates.js file. I kind of swept the code, uh, swept through the code quickly uh, before and because I was a little bit, a little bit shamed about uh, the quality of this code. And, to be honest, I don't almost don't, don't remember what this code base does. It's almost like I have started to write my own library or framework because this templates.js, it kind of uh, does Ajax calls uh, using a, a new URL, grabs uh, the HTML document, creates a DOM element uh, with JavaScript using mustache to kind of uh, 
create an, some output for it and pass it on to, to the, to the index.html file. And also, because I didn't, want to, to, I didn't want it to download my templates each time, so I added some sort of caching. So if you ask for the terminal component twice, you download it once and you get the cached version the second time. And I was thinking, uh, this is probably not good. I don't know if this will scale in a, in a real-world scenario. I'm happy that I made it work, but um, this co code would uh, cause, probably cause, cause some issues in the, in the future. So I thought, started to think, can I replace this with, uh, with, a, with a library or framework? And it turns out that it's very simple. Sorry. Six hundred and forty packages added. Okay. So, if we look at my code again, now the list item is a React component. It uses, it has, uh, if you look at the, um, uh, the uh, file tree here, that HTML uh, template is gone. Uh, React uses something called JSX, which, which is kind of mixes JavaScript and HTML. And after kind of writing a couple of, uh, of these components, I started to get used, used to this syntax and actually like it because it's all there. You don't have to browse different files. You can see what happens. You can see where the data ends, what is returned. So I started to like uh, this kind of style. And if we look at my package.json, I no longer have have this mustache library. By the way, I, that that kind of hurt. Uh, I was a little bit sad because I like. I think mustache.js is one of the coolest names of, of, on JavaScript framework. So it felt ah oh, maybe I could could uh, kind of squeeze it in somewhere, but I couldn't find any place for it. I have a couple of new dependencies: React and React DOM, and a bunch of dependencies that will uh, that is needed to to kind of uh, compile uh, all all this code and i think uh, i haven't changed uh, changed anything in the script section so let's give it a try Okay, it seems to work as expected. And if we look at the source code, uh, all I have is my like like bundle.js here. Uh, nothing here in the the head section. Uh, no no strange scripts loading. Uh, and also I, I have added an extension to to my web browser called uh, uh, called uh, React Tools. And with uh, with that tool, you can kind of see what what, what happens in, in your in your browser, what happens with the state and with it, what kind of data is passed, and you can see the kind of the React output besides the uh, HTML. So if we I go back to to my slides here, so. It turned, I guess it turned out that I can write components with uh, using just plain vanilla JavaScript. But then there are some issues that will probably appear. So what I did was I, I kind of step by step added a library that solved the issues that I had had with, with the code. 
started with a template engine, use, starting using modules, uh, coded with ECMAScript uh, 2017, and learned some Node and NPM, kind of understood a bit about NPM at least. And I think I, I know what's the, the difference between Webpack and React now. I, I think I know what Webpack does and what React does. Because if, if you would look, yeah, I think if you look at the documentation uh, and the blogs, the, the most common recommendation is how to get started with using React is download uh, this Create React app, run this script, and you're, and you're up and running. And that is great because it takes like five seconds and you have something to work on that you can be productive on. But for me, that, uh, especially when I was trying to understand React, it didn't work because, uh, of course it worked, but I felt that I had no control because I could, didn't know what these tools were doing. So to me, that was a good idea to learn them step by step. And I think maybe uh, uh, that's because I think we, we as developers need that sense of control. We need to understand what the files in that file structure does uh, what the what each file do? How many minutes do I have? I do think. I'm I'm going to wrap up with another example. <laughs> so. Here's uh, an example of, of what I mean by adding uh, of one library at a time. Because you use, doing that, then you can experiment it with, in, uh, with, with the, that framework or library in isolation. So Babel has a, a, a kind of a, a shell uh, script and a configuration that lives in this file. And this feature, I think it's uh, quite new, uh, but I wanted, to, I wanted to learn what, what it does. So, okay, so I specify uh, something called environment and which kind of browsers I want to support. So I have my example file here with some ES2017 code, like arrow functions and, and template strings and stuff like that. No, sorry. Uh, if I run Babel and that index file and want to output it in a, in a separate file, uh, compiled, I will name it, like this. I should have a file here. Oh, it looks like plain old, plain old JavaScript. If I go back to my... Uh, configuration and do something different. Let's say I want to support the latest version of Chrome only, like this, and run this uh, Babel script again. So my compiled file looks a little bit different. You know, it turns out that Chrome supports uh, arrow functions and template strings and basically everything. So, but by kind of uh, learning uh, or kind of un trying to understand each, uh, each library separately, that kind of made, made me uh, feel good and I could uh, kind of uh, sleep uh, without uh, having any nightmares about my source code. And uh, that kind of wraps up my, my speech today. Uh, thank you for, for joining my session. And if you have any questions, I'll be here. And thank you for, for listening to my session about JavaScript. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>